Hello my lovelies, this is Miss Murder and welcome to another reading of a scary story. Now this particular story has some very disturbing content, so please, if you are young or very adverse to horror, please do not listen to this story. It is from Scars and Other Distinguishing Marks by Richard Christian Matheson. The title is Red. He kept walking. The day was hot and miserable, and he wiped his forehead. Up another twenty feet, he could make out more. Oh, thank God. Maybe he'd find it all. He picked up the pace, and his breathing got thick. He struggled on, remembering his vow to himself to go through with this, not stopping until he was done. Maybe it had been a mistake to ask this favor but it was the only way he could think of to work it out. Still, maybe it had been a mistake. He felt an edge in his stomach as he stopped and leaned down to what was at his feet. He grimaced, lifting it into the large canvas bag he carried, wiped his hands and moved on. The added weight in the bag promised of more and he felt somehow better. He had found most of what he was looking for in the first mile. Only a half more to go to convince himself to be sure to not go insane. It was a nightmare for him to realize how far he'd gone this morning with no suspicion, no clue. He held the bag more tightly and walked on. Ahead, the forms who waited got bigger, closer. They stood with arms crossed, people gathered, complaining behind them. They would have to wait. He saw something a few yards up, swallowed, and walked closer. It was everywhere, and he shut his eyes, trying not to see how it must have been. But he saw it all, heard it in his head. The sounds were horrible, and he couldn't make them go away. Nothing would go away until he had everything. He was certain of that. Then his mind would at least have some chance to find a place of comfort to go on. He bent down and picked up what he could, then walked on, scanning ahead. The sun was beating down and he felt his shirt soaking with sweat under the arms and on his back. He was nearing the forms who waited when he stopped, seeing something halfway between himself and them. It had lost its shape, but he knew what it was and could not step any closer. He placed the bag down and slowly sat cross-legged on the baking ground, staring. His body began to shake. A somber-looking man walked to him and carefully picked up the object, placing it in the canvas bag and cinching the top. He gently coaxed the weepy man to stand, and the man nodded through tears. Together, they walked toward the others who were glancing at watches and losing pace. But I'm not finished, the man cried. His voice broke and his eyes grew hot and puffy. Please, I'll go crazy. Just a little longer? The somber-looking man hated what was happening and made the decision. I'm sorry, sir. Headquarters said I could only give you the half hour you asked for. That's all I can do. It's a very busy road. The man tried to struggle away but was held more tightly. He began to scream and plead and two middle-aged women who were waiting watched uncomfortably. Whoever allowed this should be reported, said one, shaking her head critically. The poor man is ready to have a nervous breakdown. It's cruel. The other said she'd heard they felt awful for the man whose little girl had grabbed on when he'd left for work that morning. The girl had gotten caught, and he'd never known. They watched the officer approaching with the crying man who he helped into the hot squad car. Then the officer grabbed the canvas bag, and as it began to drip red into the blacktop, he gently placed it into the trunk beside the mangled tricycle. The backed-up cars began to honk, and traffic was waved on as the man was driven away.